Blade Runner. Sounds dangerous. Sounds like running with scissors. Blade Runner 2049. Is it called that because there have been at least 2049 versions of Blade Runner to come out since 1982? <laughs> no. Actually, this is the sequel to the cult sci-fi classic directed by Ridley Scott, starring pre-grumpy era Harrison Ford. That movie was based loosely on Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. This movie takes place in the same universe 30 years later. It's directed by Denis Villeneuve. It stars Ryan Gosling and Harrison Ford. And the new replicants in this movie are actually more obedient to humankind and are completely subservient and exist to serve humanity. The term Blade Runner is used for a cop who goes to hunt down rogue replicants and, quote, retire them usually with a bullet in the head. And Ryan Gosling's character is a Blade Runner who goes blade running, which is not to be confused with rollerblading. And like the first one, this movie is definitely reminiscent of 1940s film noir, but in the future and with synthesizers from the 80s. <laughs> And that's the cool thing about this world. It's the future of a future from the past. So even though the first one got a bunch of predictions wrong, this movie just kind of rolls with it and carries that alternate universe forward. The story in this movie naturally unfolds and moves things forward rather than rehashing the same thing over and over again like a lot of sequels do or like every album by Godsmack. This sequel doesn't do that. It explores themes like what it means to be alive. What is it to be human? What's the difference if we can't tell the difference outright? If you're going to make a robot with a relatable intelligence, you're going to have to make that robot with the same senses as a human so that it can experience things as we do. And we can have a shared common experience, you know, with robots. And who are we but a collection of our memories? I illustrated this point earlier this year in my review for Ghost in the Shell. Like for me, I'm like, I like chocolate ice cream, but do I really like chocolate ice cream? Or do I just remember liking chocolate ice cream and tell myself that. So the next time I have chocolate ice cream, I'll this is chocolate ice cream just like I remember. Or was the universe just all created last Thursday? There's actually a theory that the entire universe was created last Thursday, and it's called Last Thursdayism. They didn't really spend too much time on the title, but it pretty much postulates that everything, including our memories, were just created, and that all of our experiences are just fake. Which is kind of crazy if you think about it, because then that means nothing ever happened before last Thursday. It's just all our false memories. Fake news. So creationists and people who think that the Earth was created 6,000 years ago, despite all of the overwhelming evidence that it wasn't, like Ken Ham, are pretty much all last Thursdayists. Which brings us back to God, smack. And how Jared Leto thinks that he is God, and so does his character in this movie. I'd say that one peccadillo is that Jared Leto tends to make the scene more about his performance of the character rather than concentrating on the character being compelling in and of itself. If that makes any sense. And if it doesn't, just go away. There's also a love story in this movie that was unexpected and genuinely emotional with a really memorable sci-fi love scene. Much more inventive and memorable than, say, this one. <laughs> Sylvia Hoax kicks ass and we should be looking out for her more in the future, as does Ana de Armas. They are really good in this movie. In fact, all of the performances are pretty spectacular. There are some amazing moments of emotion that Denis Villeneuve just lets the camera roll on these actors. There's one moment in particular that kicked me in the gut. In a moment of catharsis that Ryan Gosling's character experiences, it was an unexpected choice that Ryan Gosling makes in this moment, and it really did hit me hard. Grumpy Harrison Ford has some actually great grumpy moments in this flick too. The cinematography is some of the best I've seen in years, but that's to be expected from Roger Deakins. The original Blade Runner is such a visually iconic film, and it's very difficult to compete with. It really kicked open doors for sci-fi, and made huge advances in special effects, particularly the Douglas Trumbull effects. Blade Runner 2049 uses all the tools of today to replicate, see what I did there, the feel and look of the original, but it's just so much easier these days because of computer effects and modern tools. See what I did there? When I first heard about this project, I was like, how are they gonna go ahead and make a sequel to Blade Runner? But they did, and it's pretty great. So that's why I give it 4.75 bros out of five. I'm a sucker for great sci-fi, and I think people like Danny Villeneuve and Alex Garland are directors who are on the right track to keep moving that genre forward. The common thread between the original Blade Runner and this Blade Runner is that the replicants seem to value life more than humans do. And human history has a pretty bad track record when it comes to valuing human life and using slave labor. I mean, to this day, there are people working under inhumane conditions, but we tend to look the other way so long as our life remains blissfully unencumbered. And this movie really does shine a light on that. Well, that's my review. How about you? Are you going to go see Blade Runner 2049? Were you bored by the original Blade Runner? 
Do you like the original Blade Runner? And if so, which version? Because there's like 20 of them. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to turn on those notifications because a lot of people tend to forget to turn on the notifications and you know, I'm just here to remind you to do that. I'm Aristotle Full Throttle, your bro in the know at the fro, and I'll see you later. I'm gonna go blade running. All those moments will be lost in time. Like tears in rain.